Hello everyone and welcome back to our beginner lecture series. In this lesson we're going to talk about some basic shapes. So basic shapes are basic ideas or positions you might get into in the middle game in your games. So these aren't necessarily life or death positions and they're not exact positions but rather concepts that I want you to remember because sometimes these concepts will come up in your games. These are very important concepts so I want you to try to remember them as clearly as you can. All right, the first concept is push to the edge. When you're trying to capture a stone, if you push it towards the edge, it will run out of liberties. So in this example, we have two ways to put this white stone into Atari. If we play here, white will run. And you can see white's going to escape, white gains three liberties, and we have to keep chasing our opponent. But if we simply play here, then our opponent's going to run right into the edge. Well, the edge leaves you with nowhere to go. It has bad liberties, and you can't escape. Therefore, I just continue going down, and you can see white cannot get out. So here, by pushing my opponent to the edge, I simply forced him to die on the edge because I blocked his escape paths. The edge will help you block their escape paths. So pushing stones to the edge will help you capture them if you need to capture them. All right, what about these two stones? This is an obvious concept here because if I play here, my opponent just simply connects, right? So in this case, you can see with surrounding stones, letting them escape might be very bad. It might completely ruin the situation. While not every example will be this straightforward where they just connect, the concept here is if they escape along the side, they might be able to get out or connect or escape and live. So here, our goal is to actually push them down the edge. Once they're on the edge, we can do whatever we want. We can block from this side, and they're still going to die, or we can block on this side. Once they're on the edge, they can't escape. So it becomes very easy to capture these little stones that are near the edge by pushing them towards the edge. This also can work for groups. When you're attacking a group, you can push it towards the edge or push it towards your own thickness, which we can go over a little bit later, or you'll learn at higher levels. But for now, pushing stuff to the edge is a good way to attack it and put pressure on it because the edge can work as a kind of, kind of a wall that they can't run past. Now, let's talk about the exceptions. When you can't push the edge is when you push them to the edge and, for example, there's already a stone on the edge. Like, if there's a white stone here, then pushing to the edge does nothing, right? So not every scenario of pushing to the edge will work. However, I want you to keep the concept in mind because if something works, it's going to be probably a push to the edge move. There are not going to be uh, scenarios, or there are going to be scenarios where it doesn't quite work. So keep that in mind. But I really want you guys to understand this concept and understand that most of the time it is a very good idea to push them to the edge. All right, let's talk about the right side. The right side is actually a capturing race. A capturing race is a fight between two groups that are cut off. So let's explain. The A stones here are black stones. They have two liberties, and you can see they're not connected diagonally, right? So this black group is dying. At the same time, this B group, white's group, is also cut off, and it's also dying, and it only has two liberties. This is a very small scale, but there can be very, very large scale capturing races that can get very complex. So when you realize both sides are cut off, you, it's very important to count exactly how many liberties both sides have. So in this case, black has two and white has two. So whoever takes the liberty first will win the capturing race. If the liberties are the exact same, whoever plays first wins the capturing race. If the liberties are in, someone, in one color's favor, then that color is going to win the capturing race. However, it should be noted that at higher levels there are liberty stealing to Sujis or tactical plays that can reduce liberties. And there are some types of liberties that if you take them in different orders can change the amount of liberties they have. I don't want to give you guys examples of that right now because at this level I just want you to master the idea that if Two groups are cut off, 
and they're in a contact fight and they're both cut off, it's probably going to be a capturing race. And that means you need to count the liberties. When you go to take liberties, take the outside liberties first, and then you can capture. Here, if you were to take the inside liberty, you can see that white only has one liberty, but you also took your own liberty. And this means you actually took your own liberty and helped white kill you. So, count the liberties, and outside liberties first. That's what I want you to remember from this. The other things are just side notes for the future. For now, a capturing race is between two groups that are cut off and are next to each other. If the liberties are the same, then whoever takes the liberties first will win the capturing race, and then take the outside liberties first. All right, now let's look at the top side. Top side has to do a little bit with cutting points, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about cuts in the next video. For now, just know here, a cut is when you disconnect your opponent. So for example, I can go here, and you can see this stone and this stone are both disconnected. But our concept here is actually a double Atari. A double Atari means when I cut, this stone only has one liberty, so it's an Atari, and this stone only has one liberty, so it's an Atari. A double Atari is a very painful shape. That is because your opponent cannot save both. So either black's going to get this stone, or black's going to get this stone. There's no way for white to save both stones. If you see a double Atari, which many players at the beginning will try this shape where they're trying to surround their opponent and they'll leave all kinds of cutting points. These cutting points are very dangerous, so make sure you fix your cuts. Uh, and when that happens, you'll sometimes find a double Atari cut. So, count the liberties. If there's two liberties on this stone and two liberties on this stone, uh, just imagine a stone here in your head. How many liberties do they have now? One and one. Therefore, this is a double Atari. A double Atari is a very powerful shape because it can immediately connect after capturing a stone. It is also a shape your opponent cannot escape from. So, a double Atari is a very powerful shape that I want you to remember and look for if it comes up in your games. Because if it does, it can help you completely reverse the situation. All right, that's all of our shapes for this video. In the next video, in the next video we're gonna go over some more shapes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.